hi guys welcome back to my channel today in today's video we are going to be learning how to make this beautiful box pleated princess dart peplum blouse with a front zipper so this is the cutting tutorial the pattern drafting and me cutting on the fabric and the part two will be the finishing the sewing and everything okay so if it that's what you're interested in learning how to make keep watching this video to the end meanwhile this is amen clothing youtube channel where we teach you how to use patterns to create unlimited design so this is me cutting these out on the, um, the fabric all right this is the front i'm marking my notches all right so that everything is in place and let's head straight to the pattern drafting tutorial proper so firstly you'll be needing the basic body's front from your shoulder to your hip right because this is a peplum so you're starting from your shoulder to your hip i have my bust point line my under bust my waistline of course and my hip line which is the hemline right and of course, I have my basic darts, my waist dart, and my side bust dart. And because this is a total neck, right? Okay, let me just mark out that dart so you guys can see it. But be, so because this is a total neck, my neckline is in the basic, right? It's still in the basic because it's a total neck. In the basic, like you want to make a shirt. So what I'm going to do now is to separate this part of the hip starting from the waistline i'm going to be cutting out the hip region this is the part where we are going to be using for the peplum so i'm going to be setting it aside while we work on the half scale upper bodies right so this is what our half scale upper bodies is looking like now like i said my neckline is in the basic because it is a total neck okay so the next thing i'm going to do now is to contour my underbust of course we are trying to create an armhole princess seam and I'm firstly going to be contouring my underbust to get that very nicely fitted effect that we want at the underbust, okay? So I marked one inch on both sides of my underbust, starting from the bust apart measurement line. From the bust apart measurement line, I marked half inch on both sides. And I'm going to be connecting that half inch to the bust point like so and to the waistline like so. So this is what it looks like having done that this is what it looks like the next thing i'm going to be determining where to impute my princess seam line from wherever it is at the armhole i've said it severally that your princess seam line can come from anywhere at your armhole but this time around i use my mid armhole you can use anywhere around the armhole and here i'm going to be using my mid armhole you're supposed to use a french curve for this but if you know what you're doing like you're used to doing this you can use your hands to do it like a free hand so this is what it looks like okay so we'll go ahead to create the armhole princess seam right now i'm going to be cutting this line open all to the way to the bust point And then I'll go ahead to open up my side bust dart. So after opening up the side bust dart, I will go ahead and close it so that I can open it here. Alright? I'll use my tape to hold this down so I can open it here. So I'm going to be taping this down right now. You want to make sure you hold everything in place so it does not move about so i'm trying to hold everything in place right now okay and then the next thing is to start cutting out the rest of the darts 
as you can see our armhole pre-sensing is already obvious it has formed so i'm also going to be cutting out the other part of the dart at this the center front area like so So if you look closely, you find out that this very part of the area that looks like the bust is pointed. So I'm going to be smoothing it out. We don't want that pointy effect. So I'll use my scissors to smooth it out. And yeah, this is what we are having for the upper front scale remember in the cutting i added my zip allowance at the center front, okay so now we're going to be heading over to the peplum area now this peplum is box split okay it's box split now there's something about box split you don't just have to go straight and start folding in your fabric you have to add a little bit of flair so it doesn't just look straight I don't know if you get it. So the first thing I always do is to close up this dart and open it up like so. Close the dart and open it at the hem because we need the fullness at the hem. So I'm going to be closing this dart at this very point to open it up at the hem. And that is what I just did now. So I'm going to be adding an additional, a different color of paper into that place. So you guys know that that was the fullness we added. So it can indicate that we added fullness. I'm going to be imputing another color of pattern paper right there. And of course I'll use my tape and hold it down. So I'm not really satisfied with the amount of fullness we have at the hem. I want to add more fullness. So this is what I'm going to do next. Remember this is not a 180 flare, 360, 720 or 1080 degree flare. No, we're trying to get a box split. But then because it is a peplum, we have to add fullness at the hem to give it a very nice fit and effect. So I'm going to be drawing in this line like so. And from this line, I'll be adding more fullness to this very pattern. Like I said, you're not trying to create a flare. So be conscious of the fullness you're adding. Do not go overboard so that your box split will not look funny. Do not go overboard. So I'm adding about one inch at the hem, which is very much okay. So having done that, I'll go ahead now to cut off all the excess yellow pattern paper. Now on this foundation is where we are going to derive our box split for the peplum. This is the foundation we are going to use to derive our box split peplum. So now remember that this is your center front, right? And when you cut, you're going to be having it unfold. I'm using a zipper in front. Nevertheless, it's going to be coming out as one. So now you want to use, you're going to be getting a measurement. Remember that whatever you get here, if I'm using two inches, remember that that means here is four inches. So let it tally with that of the other side. The center is four inches. The sides also has to be like four, four inches or better still four and a half, four and a half. Do not go and use 10 inches in front and your sides are five inches, five inches. It will look funny. So here now I marked 2.5 inches all right and on my hemline I'm marking to know how many i'm going to be using the total of my hemline is around 11 inches all right so i went ahead and marked i checked four inches i'm trying to check to know which i'm going to use to make it come out better 
I used three inches and now we're having seven and a half. That three inches, when we cut it on fold, I'm going to be having seven inches at my center front and my size will be having 7.5. Are you seeing? It's going to make everything to be uniform. All I'm trying to say here is that you're trying to have uniformity of spread in your pleats for your peplum. Since it's a box pleat, you're trying to have uniformity of spread for the pleats. So that the center front does not look bigger than the sides. I hope you understand. So I've gone ahead to cut this out right now. I'll go ahead to get a fresh pattern paper. Now this pattern paper will serve as the part where we are folding inwards. The yellow pattern paper that I brought will serve as the part we are folding inwards. Okay. I'll go ahead to hold this very part down with my tape. So now having held it down with my tape, it's left for me to decide how much I want to fold in. Now remember, the very main focus of the folding is at the waist region where you're going to be attaching to the house key. It's also at the lower region. Because that of the lower region is always usually open, thereby adding more fullness to your peplum. I always love when I fold in, let it come in well, so that the box split will be very obvious. So I'm using 3 inches here. You can use 4 inches. I think maximum of 4 inches. Okay, I'm using 3 inches here because this fabric is just 2 yards. So I don't want to go overboard and I'll run short of fabric. 3 inches, okay, that is what I'm going to be using. As I'm drafting my pattern, I'm trying to check. Like I said, whenever you're doing pattern drafting, you should be able to see what you're going to make on the pattern. So for the hemline, I used 3.5 inches. And now you're going to be having a slant look. Can you see that? You're going to be having a slant look. The fact that we're trying to box split does not mean it should look straight. You should also have that peplum flare effect. Okay. So this is what we are doing now. And I tilted the hemline a little for more fullness here. For more fullness, I tilted the hemline a little. And then this is it. I'm going to be using my tape to hold this down. So now we're going to be cutting out the excesses. Of course, the white pattern, which is your foundation pattern, should give you how to cut. How do I put it? It should put you in line on where to remove and where not to remove, of course. On where to cut out and where not to cut out. So the white pattern, which is your foundation pattern, is going to guide you through on where to cut out and where not to cut out. Okay. So this is what it looks like and I'm going to have to close up the pleats like so. So we're going to be having something like this and you see that very little thing at the hem, a very little part at the hem, I'll go ahead and cut it off because I don't want something bulging out and looking like, like the hemline is irregular. Okay, so we have to cut it out so everything has the circular effect without one being, how do I put it, protruding out. So this is what the peplum pattern looks like. I had to mark, to label center front and side front, so I don't get confused because I'm not sewing it today, you guys. So here are all the patterns for the front, right? And after this, we'll head over to that of the back. For the back also, you'll be needing your basic back bodies. I labeled back. As you can see, my shoulder that is there. I have my chest line, half length, shoulder that, waist that, of course. And just as we did to the front, I will detach from the waistline, the lower scale, the lower bodies, and I'll keep it aside. Okay. Now remember, we need a princess seam 
my shoulder that is there and my shoulder that is one inches if i cut this shoulder that which is actually where we are going to be getting the princess seam for the back unlike the front where we used the side bust that so now because i'm going to be closing up this shoulder that to open it up to get my princess seam i have to re put that one inch back to the shoulder so that the shoulder of the back does not shorten from the shoulder of the front okay so i'm going to be imputing back the one inch that was the reason why i added the yellow pattern paper so you guys will understand better so i marked one inch and i'm going to be extending the shoulder line like so and of course i'm going to be marking also the length of that dart and with my ruler i'm going to be finishing up like so so i'll take out the excess So now the next thing I'm going to do is to determine where I'm going to be imputing my armhole princess seam. And of course I marked. I used my mid armhole I think. You can use whatever you want. So now I'm going to be drawing in the line for the back armhole princess seam. This is what it looks like. Now let's start manipulating our darts. You're going to be cutting open your shoulder darts. Your back shoulder that unlike the front where we used the excess from the bust side bust that here we are going to be using the excess from the shoulder that to create the back ammo princess all right so after i've cut it this way i'm going ahead to cut the line of the princess seam and next thing i'll close it please do not overlap you're going to make sure that the shoulder is touching each other do not worry about the overlapping of the other side it's even going to help the back to fit closely this is the kind of a contouring i said that in one of my videos right this is kind of a contouring so just make sure your shoulder is touching each other do not overlap the shoulder forget about every other part that is overlapping just make sure that the shoulder is closed the shoulder that is closed right so this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead to remove the dart of the waistline. And here we've created our back and hold princess seam. This is what it looks like. Okay. I'll set it aside. And for this very part, same procedure as the front. Okay. So whatever you did to the front, same procedure as that of the front. And voila, this is it for the back. And here are all the patterns for the back. Right. I labeled center back and side back. Here are all the patterns for the front okay please you do not want to discard your pattern until you are done sewing i always say this do not discard your pattern until you're done sewing so next thing we head over to the sleeve this is my basic sleeve the front and the back and of course the center now the sleeve is pointy which will be revealing the armhole i do not want that so i'm going to be imputing a basic sleeve and also the pointy sleeve for my own the one on the thumbnail is just the pointy sleeve. For mine, I don't want a situation where if I lift my hands, my armhole is going to be showing. So because of that, I'm going to be using the pointy sleeve and also a basic sleeve on it. So now I'm trying to get the pointy sleeve. I marked out my cap sleeve 6 inches and then I'm connecting it like so to get that pointy sleeve, pointy sleeve effect. So 
So I marked in one inch from my underarm, right? Then I connected it to the cap like so. I did the same thing. I'm going to be doing the same thing to this very side. So you guys, I'll go ahead to trace out this whole path. I'm going ahead to trace out this whole path, okay? So this is the twist, and from the center, I'm going to be cutting two and not through all the way to the top like so. I added the fresh part and paper to spread it out. The reason why you're spreading it out is to give it that standing effect. You can use a crinoline or a very hard stuff to give it a very much standing effect. But in my case, I'm not going to be using any of those. I'll just interface it and that's all. I'll use a very light interface and that's all. So I'm going ahead now to cut it out like so. You can spread as wide as you want for more effect. The cold is actually affecting my voice, you guys. I don't know how cold your area is. My area is so cold. Very, very cold. Here is so cold. I'm in the northern part of Nigeria and it is so cold here. It's actually affecting my voice. Please bear with me. So this is what it looks like, okay? And when you fix it, you're going to be having that. See that extra paper we added? It's going to give you an extra, you know, lift from the normal place. So this is the basic sleeve. And when I put this on top of it, just a picture of what we are going to be having. Like I said, if you have more fabric, you can add more. See the distance? It's, it has given a lift from the normal basic sleeve, right? So if you have more fabric, you can add more. My fabric is just two yards and I don't want to run short of fabric. So I have to just make do with this, which is okay. All right. So this is the sleeve pattern for this very tutorial. Okay. And then we just go through the other patterns, the back and the front. We'll just revisit them again. Just show you what it looks like. Here is the back, right? And here is the front. So do not forget the part two is the sewing. And I'll see you there. Bye.